If you recall, we started this whole adventure with an example about uh, driving to my grandmother's house and determining that the slope of an arbitrarily complex curved line would, on the graph I gave, represent the speed that I was driving at. But that the problem with calculating that, even though we knew we had an actual speed at every point of our drive, was that mathematically we kept getting zero over zero, an indeterminate form. And in order to figure out how to turn indeterminate forms into a meaningful number, we determined that we needed to study limits. The first section on limits was about limits as x approaches infinity, simply because students are typically more familiar with asymptotes. Now we turn more directly to studying limits in the case where it will be useful, where we need to understand what the slope of a curve is. And that's limits as x approaches c. Now we're going to need a definition of limit for this situation. And it will be similar to the one that we had previously. But we've got to come up with just the right definition. I think, as I mentioned before, that the real breakthroughs in calculus came in the 1660s, but it wasn't for another 200 years that mathematicians were finally satisfied that they'd come up with a very precise definition of limit. And that's what we're going to talk about here. Now, there's an old joke that goes something like this. There was an organized crime syndicate, and they needed to hire a new accountant. So they brought in three candidates. The first candidate, they said, what's 2 plus 2? And the candidate said, oh, that's simple, it's 5. <clears throat> they brought in the second candidate, and they said, what's 2 plus 2? The second candidate says, it's 4. They brought in the third candidate, and they said, what's 2 plus 2? He walked over to the window, lowered the shades, and then turned back and said, what would you like it to be? And he's the one that got the job. Well, we have a similar situation with finding a good definition of limits as x approaches some finite value c. The question is, what would we like it to be? So let's put in three functions. Let's get, get a little more room here. Let's put in three functions that I've described up top here. And in every case, let's talk about what we would like the definition of limit to be. So our first function is f of x is x squared. I think you all know basically what that looks like. Something like this. And if we want to know what the limit is, remembering the limit is about the height. As the x value approaches 1, well, in that situation, we would like the limit to simply be the value that the function has at that point. Namely, we would like the limit as x approaches 1 of this function to simply be what you get when you plug in 1 into that function. And for the vast majority of functions, we want the definition of limit to give us that obvious intuitive answer. The limit as I get close to a number in the x-axis is simply what I would get if I plugged that value in for x into the function. Let's look at another case. f of x is a piecewise function. And I've made the function equal to x plus 1 as long as x is less than or equal to 1 means it's going to look something like this. And we're going to make it equal to x if x is greater than 1. So our function keeps on going like that, something like that. That's not the greatest of drawings, but hopefully 
clear enough to not confuse you. Now, what we want to say the limit of this is? We want to say that the limit of this, and notice when we say the limit, we have to specify the particular value that we say it's getting close to. We want a, the limit of this function, as x approaches 1, to be does not exist. We, it's hardly as if this function is heading towards one particular value in height. So here we clearly want to have a definition of limit that will not only handle this case, but also handle this case by telling us that there is no such limit at as x approaches 1. Well, those are sort of the two extremes. <clears throat> For regular functions, we simply want it to be the value at the point. For functions that have big gaps in them, right at the point in question, right at the x value in question, we want our definition to tell us that the limit doesn't exist. But there's one more kind of function that we want our definition of limit to be very careful about. And that's this function and one similar to it right here. Now I'd like you to think, just to try to develop your intuitions, what you think this function might look like if we graphed it. The quantity x squared minus 1 divided by the quantity x minus 1. And we're interested in knowing the limit as x approaches 1. Well, again, I encourage you to think about it. You might be surprised to see what your graphing calculator gives. If we uh, look at this, y equals, we've got the right function in there. And then we look at this graph. Are you surprised? Looks just like a straight line. Well, that's a little odd. How can this function look like a straight line? Well, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But one thing I'd like you to notice, if we go in and look at the table, we notice that there's something a little and everywhere except when x equals 1. And there we get an error. Well, why do we get an error? Well, it's because if x equals 1, then we get a 0 in the denominator. Worse, we also get a 0 in the numerator. We get an indeterminate form. So we realize that this graph looks sort of like this. See if I can get this right. That's why on our graphing calculator it looked like a straight line, but in fact it's a little more subtle. So what should we want our definition of limit to say about this kind of a function? Well, the answer is, for reasons that you'll only see as we move forward, we need our definition of limit to say that even if the function isn't defined at the place where we're taking the limit, that the limit is still what we'd expect if we were just drawing a regular line. Namely, that the limit of f of x, in this case, is 2. So we need a definition that gives us the obvious answer for almost all functions. We need a definition that tells us a limit doesn't exist in cases like this. And most subtly, we need a definition that gives us the limit as 2 for a function like this. Let me remind you what definition we had for limits at infinity. This was our definition for a limit at infinity. And I'd like to invite you to pause the video and think for a minute how we would need to modify this definition to get the definition as we get close to a particular value, a particular finite value of x. All right, well, hopefully you've taken a minute to try to stretch your brain and think about the answer to that. Here's the answer that I have. Notice that everything in this definition is identical to what we had in the limited infinity definition, except for two things. First, 
This is about getting close enough to see, not getting far away from the origin. Well, my guess is you it may well have anticipated that. But here's the real kicker. Close enough, but we have to add this language in, the but never touching part, to handle this very odd case. So that's the definition of limit that we're going to use. Uh, some of you, again, may be interested in just going one step farther and this is to show you formal definition of limit at infinity. And this is the corresponding definition of limit as x approaches a finite value. Again, this will definitely not be covered in the AP Calculus course. But for those of you that are going on into, into college calculus, you will probably run into this. So I thought it couldn't hurt to let you at least have a look at what you'll be seeing.